In this video, we're going to hit the highlights of setting up a Gen 3 tankless unit. While it's not brain surgery, there are a few steps that if you skip or do out of sequence will cause you to backtrack and troubleshoot. We'll give you some pro tips for those. Before we dive in, the most important piece of advice we can offer is to pull up the Gen 3 setup checklist on your smartphone and read through the whole thing first. When you're on site, just step deliberately through each step in the correct sequence. The link to the checklist, mistaway.com slash 90500, is printed on a sticker inside the lid of the unit. A couple of important steps happen before you set up the unit, so we're going to start with step minus one, selecting a suitable location for the Gen 3. It's especially important for a Gen 3 to be sitting on flat ground, and it should be accessible for service. This one is neither. It also needs to be relatively close to a water faucet dedicated to the unit. We provide 25 feet of 3 8 inch tubing with the unit, and it's a good idea to confirm that the faucet is able to deliver at least one gallon per minute, which isn't much, or you can expect problems. It also must be near a GFCI outlet with a cover. The power cord on the unit is 12 feet long, and you should never use an extension cord to reach the outlet. The unit needs 120 volts and requires a 15 amp circuit to operate. If there is insufficient voltage, which is likely to happen if you use an extension cord, you will have problems. The motor may overheat and the agitation valve may not open, which means the unit won't mist. Here's a pro tip. Check the voltage at the outlet with a multimeter before setting the unit up. If the voltage is less than 120 volts, the homeowner will need to call an electrician. Now that we know where the unit is going, let's talk about step zero, removing the Gen 3 from the box, which can be a challenge if you don't know the pro tip. After you open the box, open the lid and remove the finish kit. Place one hand under the front lip of the unit and the other hand on the lip of the open lid, then lift straight up. The box should slide right off. The unit weighs approximately 45 pounds, so you may need some help. Now thread the remote antenna from the finish kit onto the coax fitting on top of the unit. Step one is to connect the water supply line and filter to the misting unit. Throughout, take care not to introduce any dirt into the line. If even a few grains of sand or dirt gets into the inlet solenoid valve that controls the water, it can get stuck into the open position and overfill the batch tank. You'll have to take it apart and clean it. Start at the unit. Insert the short length of 3 8 inch tubing connected to the inlet water filter into the 3 8 inch fitting on the lower right corner of the Gen 3. Now move to the faucet. To allow the Gen 3 to share the faucet with a garden hose, use a Y fitting like this one with a valve on each leg of the Y. Thread the faucet adapter included with the unit onto the Y and then insert one end of the long length of 3 8 inch tubing. Here's the pro tip. After you cut the 3 8 inch line from the faucet and before you connect it to the port on the filter marked in, open the valve on the Y and run some water through the line. After you make the connection to the filter, be sure the faucet is on and the valve on the Y is open. Now it's time for step two to test that the system will fill with water and then spray. Then you'll visually inspect the nozzle circuit for leaks. Go ahead and connect the nozzle circuit to the quarter inch bulkhead fitting on the misting unit. If you've installed a zone kit, connect both nozzle circuits. Plug in the unit and confirm that the controller boots up. Now execute an inspect cycle from the maintenance menu in the controller. If you have no idea how to do this, be sure and watch the navigating the controller video in this section of Mr. Way U before you attempt your first setup. You'll hear a click as the inlet solenoid valve opens, the display will flash fill, and you should also hear water running into the batch tank of the unit. It will take a minute or two to fill the batch tank. When the batch tank is full, you'll hear a click as the agitation valve opens. The display will flash INS. Watch the pressure gauge. The needle will be at rest until the lines are filled and then rapidly rise. The nozzle should be misting. Now go walk the nozzle circuit and look for leaks. You may need to run several inspect cycles as you find and repair them. If you've got two zones, you'll need to inspect both zones using INS1 and INS2. If you only see INS rather than INS1 and INS2 in the setup menu, the controller doesn't know the zone kit is installed. Reboot the controller by unplugging it and then plugging it back in. 
The controller will recognize the zone kit when it reboots and show the correct menu items. Here's a pro tip. If you've installed landscape risers and trenched for tubing, don't bury the lines until you've hooked the unit up and inspected the nozzle circuit for leaks. Here's another pro tip. When it comes time to program the controller, you're going to need to accurately enter the number of nozzles on the circuit. They are easier to count if they are missing, so count them while you're inspecting. Once you're certain the nozzle circuit is in good shape, remove the plastic plug that covers access to the pump bypass and run another inspect cycle. Use a flathead screwdriver to adjust the bypass so that the pressure gauge reads 250 PSI. Next, if you've got one, you should install the canister style nozzle circuit filter. It has an element inside that will prevent the nozzles from clogging. It is much easier and much less expensive to occasionally replace that element than it is to replace a bunch of clogged nozzles. So you really should have one on every system. You'll first assemble the bracket to the head of the filter and then mount it onto the side of the Gen 3. Here's the pro tip. Fill up the canister with water from a hose before threading it onto the filter head. This will ensure that there is no air trapped in the canister that would cause it to rupture or even explode when the system pressures up. Thread the canister onto the mounted head, then cut and connect the tubing, making sure to follow the direction of flow arrows that are molded into the filter body. Now it's time to orient the handheld remote transmitter to the receiver in the unit and test it. The unit won't respond to a remote mist if imp car, meaning empty cartridge, is flashing on the home screen. Since we're still testing and don't want to add any concentrate yet, we'll have to fool the Gen 3 into thinking it has some. Here's the pro tip. Run the refill routine without inserting the bottle. Find refill in the maintenance menu and press and hold the green arrow button for a few seconds until you see mix. Accept the default for mix, bot, and level with the green arrow button. After you see done and then vent, press the green button to return to the home screen. The unit also won't respond to a remote command if the system mode is off, or the nozzle count is zero, or the remote misduration is zero. So set the system mode on the home screen to auto every day, set NOS in the setup menu to the number of nozzles you've installed, and set RIM in the setup menu. 45 seconds is a common duration. You'll need the handheld transmitter for the next step. Enter the setup menu and put the receiver into learn mode by selecting LRT and then holding the green button down for a couple of seconds. A countdown will start. Now use a paper clip to press the recessed pairing button on the back of the handheld transmitter. Here's the pro tip. Don't hold the pairing button down or it will go into another mode. Just press and release it with the paper clip. You'll know you've done it correctly if the blue LED above the button flashes a few times and the controller displays done. Pressing the miss button on the transmitter completes the pairing. Now let's test the remote by pressing the miss button again. An LED on the transmitter will light, indicating that the unit received the signal. After a fill cycle, the display should flash mist and you'll see mist coming out of the nozzles. You can stop it by pressing stop mist on the remote. It's a good idea to test the Gen 3's flow meter and leak detection capability and to be doubly sure that your nozzle circuit doesn't have a leak that you didn't notice before. Press mist on the remote transmitter to run a mist and let it completely finish. At the end of the mist cycle, if you see error 3, you probably have a leak. To be certain, clear the error by holding the red stop button for a few seconds and run another remote mist. Now it's finally time to put concentrate into the unit and charge the batch tank up to its target concentration. Make sure that the concentrate you're about to use is on our approved list for Gen 3s. If it's not, it may damage the equipment or may not be legal to apply through the system. You can find the list on Self Help. It's best to use what's called a tip and measure bottle to hold the concentrate. The plus cap included with the unit goes onto what we call the pour port, and this side, the vent port, allows the bottle to vent as the dosing pump in the unit pumps out the concentrate. We sell both half gallon and full gallon empty tip and measures. For both, the full point is the top seam. For an average size 40 nozzle system, a half gallon fill will correspond with a replenishment cycle of about 60 days, which is about the right duration for a service cycle. For larger systems, or if you want to extend the service cycle, use a one gallon fill. Here's a three-part pro tip. 
Avoid a mess by using a funnel like this to fill the tip and measure. Make sure not to cross thread or to over tighten the plus cap when you thread it onto the pour port. And be sure to remove the seal from the vent port so the bottle vents as the dosing pump pulls concentrate from it. Now is a good time to take the adhesive backed label that came with the concentrate and stick it to the side of the bottle. It's required by the automated misting language on the label and it's important that you do it. Insert the bottle into the coupler in the unit. When it's time to refill the bottle, pushing the darker gray button on the coupler will release it. Now run the refill routine, this time for real. The first piece of information you'll need is the mix ratio, which we've explained in other videos. For the most common formulations, you can accept the default, 108 parts water to one part concentrate. However, that's not the case with all the approved concentrates. You should check the label, or look at our approved list for the recommended dosing. The next piece of information is BOT, the bottle size in ounces. If you've got a half gallon bottle, it's 64. If it's a one gallon bottle, it's 128. The final prompt is to adjust the gas gauge for how full the bottle is, probably full, which is the default. After you see vent, which is a reminder to vent the bottle, press the green button to return to the home screen. But wait, you're not through. Remember the batch tank inside the Gen 3 is now filled with fresh water. Before we put the system into service, we need to charge the batch tank up to its target mix concentration that you just set in the controller. After that, the Gen 3 will do it after every mist cycle when it rebuilds the batch. If you forget to do this, the mist won't have enough active ingredients to be effective. Enter the maintenance menu, scroll to CHG, and hold the green button down for a few seconds. A countdown will be displayed and the controller will flash dose. Here's the pro tip. To be sure the concentrate fills the lines and the dosing pump and gets the solution in the batch tank to target, you should run two charge cycles. While you're waiting through the countdown, you can make sure that the dosing pump is working properly by removing the controller from the well in the black plastic shroud and watching for the concentrate to make its way to and through the clear discharge side into the mixing vessel. Now let's enter the mist cycles. First, confirm the day and time shown on the controller home screen are correct. If not, change them. Now set the desired mist cycles in the cycles menu. A pretty common misting program sets cycle one to a morning cycle, say 7 a.m. for 45 seconds after the sprinkler system is run, and then a dusk cycle, say 7 p.m. for 45 seconds, and a third cycle around 11 p.m. for 45 seconds. You won't go wrong with that. There are other parameters in the setup menu that you'll want to set if, say, you're installing a wind sensor. Otherwise, you can safely accept the defaults. There is a complete list of these in the controller menus article in Text Health Help. Now it's time to pat yourself on the back and button up the unit. Maybe get a drink. Make a final confirmation that the system mode is set to auto every day and then close the lid on the unit. 